Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for February 2016. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see more about my upcoming Astrology Apprenticeship Program, which will start registration in February, and you can see my astrology blog and my other blogs, growing list of blogs there. So what's going on in February? February is a very interesting month that takes a very in-depth astrological analysis to advise you through. And this is because of many factors coming together that seem to conflict with one another. And then looking at the overview of the whole picture can get a little complicated. So I'm going to try to, to weave you through some of the layers of what we're taking into, into consideration here. February has the first half of it still in the post shadow period for Mercury retrograde. Mercury rules communication, transportation, expression. So it rules a lot of things that we deal with every day. And when Mercury doesn't have full steam, which it doesn't until February 15th, although every day it gets closer to February 15th, it gets more steam. Usually it's better to wait until closer to that time to make decisions because you won't have the full glory of Mercury in its transit. And then Mars retrograde shadow period starts February 18th. So at the first glance, we might say, oh, February is kind of, mm, there's a lot of, things in movement and maybe it's not good for making decisions. Well, if you thought that, you would be making a huge mistake because if you place February in the scheme of the rest of the calendar year, it's one of the best times to make decisions. First of all, it's because Mars retrograde is occurring this year. We only have Mars retrograde happen every a little over two years. And so you won't hear about it discussed as often. At some point I will have a Mars retrograde, um, probably at the end of February, I'll have a Mars retrograde um, video up. So look for that. Um, if not, definitely by the beginning of March. But I'll give you a little bit of a review of it. Mars will go retrograde April 17th through June 29th. Mars rules your get up and go, your impetus, your, um, your energy, your, your drive, your passions. So most people are going to experience a cooling down of those things. If you're a person who is very driven, you might get a little break because you might not be as ambitious and maybe that will be a positive thing for you. For the rest of everyone else, it's going to feel like you're moving through molasses and it's definitely not a type of energy you want for launching new things. So that puts February as the strongest time in the entire first, more than the first half of the year for launching anything or doing anything. So you wanna take full advantage of that because even though Mars retrograde shadow starts February 18th, it's not very strong yet. The closer you get to the actual retrograde, which is April 17th, the more strong and influential it will become. So in February, you've got the tail end of the Mercury thing, but it's still workable. You've got the very beginning of the Mars thing, but it's still workable. Plus, there are wonderful, a massive amount of trines. I mean, not trines, sextiles, which are 60 degree angles. February 3rd, February 8th, 9th, 10th, and 13th. That's the 3rd, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 13th. There are beautiful 60 degree angles, which are bringing opportunities. A 60 degree angle is one that is harmonious and it can bring some sweet things just on its own. But usually the sweetness becomes stronger if you do something with it. So for instance, let's say you were to bake some pears. Okay, pears are pretty sweet. But then, that's like, would be the um, 60 degree angle without doing anything. But then if you were to drizzle some honey on top of them, then they're going to be way better. And that is what this 60 degree angle is like. It's something that will be sweet. But if you do something with it, take an active role with it, it can be even sweeter and be even better. So that's making this month full of opportunities that you can do something with. The other thing that's important about February as it relates to other events in the year is that it's the month before the eclipses. So there's a solar eclipse. I'll talk way more about the solar eclipses in March because that's and how they can affect you um, because that's when they happen. But I'll give you some highlights and as it relates especially to February. So March 8th, solar eclipse, 18 degrees of Pisces. March 23rd, lunar eclipse, three degrees of Libra. The solar eclipses bring in massive amount of new opportunities, bigger on a much bigger level than these 60 degree angles even that I'm talking about, just big things. The lunar eclipses close or end or complete things. 
and sometimes can be very emotional. So the chance for life-changing news that is eclipse related to come in is very high in February because up to six weeks before the eclipses, the news can start to come in. So that puts February as prime time for getting eclipse news, which may be something you have to respond to. Eclipse time in general is not a time to do something, it's a time to respond. So March, even though it's clear of some, the Mercury retrograde and, and Mars retrograde hasn't gotten to its complete strength yet, Mars, or March isn't the best time to be doing a bunch of things because you have to have your energy ready to respond to what happens. And if you're wrapped up too much in pushing things forward, you're not going to have the time, energy, or focus to deal with responding to the things that come. Eclipse time is time for responses. And so you might see some of that start to happen in February, but it's still a really good time. And like I said, one of the best times for a good bit of the year to push things forward, especially if it's something from the past that you're bringing back or something you've been working on for a long time and bringing forward. Doesn't mean you can't do anything during the Mars retrograde, but it's not the best time for making that initial push on, you know, for something. People are going to get a lot more lazy. They're going to get a lot more laid back. Things are not going to be as much in the flow for forward movement. So you want to take advantage of this time. Something else important about February and the energies and the upcoming eclipses is that we have our agenda for ourselves. It's our plan, our things we write down, our goals. And then the universe has a plan for us. Now, if we're intuitively inclined and we feel like we're very connected to the universe, sometimes what we are thinking for ourselves is very much aligned with what the universe is thinking because we're tuning into what the universe is thinking and we're on the same page. But there are always going to be things that our ego uh, translates different than what the divine plan is intending or some other version of that. And eclipses come and show us the divine plan. And it could be very different than what our plan was. So then you have the choice to not resist the divine plan. Even if it seems like this is terrible, how could this be the divine plan? Sometimes eclipses bring in news like that. But what I can say for sure is that if you do get difficult news at the eclipse, it's because, or not because, it is trying to coax something out of you. And sometimes it takes something very dramatic or very stressful or very big in order to get that out of you. Very much like a diamond being formed. There's a tremendous amount of pressure to get that beautiful shiny diamond and cleaning and polishing off to get a diamond to look as we know it, you know, which is really pretty and sparkly. And each of us have something pretty and sparkly that we want to bring that the universe wants us to bring into the world. And these high pressure situations that come in the form of transits are exactly the pressures that it takes sometimes to coax it out of us. So if you get challenging news, have a little voice in the back of your mind, say, Okay, now what are you going to do with this? What, what can be wonderful about this, even though this is terrible, you know? But some of you might just get good news and might not have any difficulties at all. And maybe it's just the change, you know, doing something new is difficult for people sometimes. And just the change, the drastic change, even if it's not a bad change, could be stressful. So this is a really interesting moment right before these big eclipses where eclipse news can come in, where things are still a little fuzzy for Mercury, they're starting to get fuzzy for Mars. Mars retrograde is not a great time to buy machinery. So February is going to be your best bet for a while if you have to get new devices and things like that. Um, let's see. So there's going to be a new moon on February 8th. That's in Aquarius. You early degree and some middle degree placements will have that new moon energy in your fifth house of true love, of romance, fun, creativity, hobbies, games, pleasures, fun, period. And so new opportunities may come there. Where the new moon is, the sun is also transiting, so you have extra support there. That energy is coming soon for the rest of you middle degree and late degree placements because the sun will be there for you soon. But right now, the sun is transiting and the new moon for the rest of the middle and late degree placements in the fourth house. So what is early, middle, and late degree? There are 30 degrees of a sign. So if you imagine there's 360 degrees in a circle, we'll say that's um, the span of the, the 12 zodiac signs, 360 degrees divided by 12 signs is 30 degrees. 
So if you imagine what a 30 degree angle might look like, that is the full span of that sign. So if you are up here at this point in the early degree, and someone else is down here at the late degree, your monthly charts are going to look very different. They just are. It's kind of similar to maybe you're in a certain neighborhood where it's like there's a continuity to the neighborhood, but a couple of blocks over, people are living on the water in these huge houses and have boat access. And over here on this side, maybe there's a mountain, you know, and maybe these people are right in the mountain or who knows what it looks like, but it's different, even though it's in the same neighborhood. So there's a big difference. My point is there's a huge difference between an early degree chart and a late degree chart. So it's really important for you to figure out where you are on this spectrum. And that's why I always speak to the differences. Okay. So early degree Libras are from the beginning of the sign around September 23rd until around October 2nd. Middle degree Libras are October 3rd through around October 12th. And then late degree Libras are October 13th through the 23rd. Okay, so it's basically divided into thirds, 10 degrees or 10 days into the sign is the early, the second middle degree, you know, 10 degrees is the middle and the last 10 degrees is the late. This is the same if you have your ascendant or your moon, whatever you're watching for. Whatever degree your ascendant is, zero through around nine degrees are early, and then 10 through 19 are middle, and then 20 through 29 are late. So now you know, okay? So you early degree placements have the new moon and the sun transiting in the fifth house. Some of you early middle degree placements will also have that there. The sun is coming there for the rest of you. The rest of you have this in the fourth house, the new moon and the sun transiting, which means warmth, opportunities coming in your house of home, family, um, place of origin, ancestry, housing related things or home related things or psychologically based things, practices or focus for yourself, things like that. So those are the main things that I wanted to talk about for this month. It, definitely go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out my astrology blog. I'm going to be having a great Jupiter blog coming soon um, and other things posting all the time and I have other blogs. Definitely check out my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine. Speaking of the diamonds, it helps you to bring your shine into the world and it's available on a sliding scale so that it's accessible to everyone. Um, and if you're interested in learning astrology, in February I will be opening registration for my astrology apprenticeship program, so you can stay tuned for that. So I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!